Okay, thank you very much for coming this afternoon. I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in the Institute to try and understand autoimmune diseases, and in particular, autoimmune or type 1 diabetes, which is my special area of interest. So if we're going to talk about autoimmunity, we first need to understand a little bit about the immune system. So the immune system is made up of a lot of different cell types that are each specialised to fight a particular type of infection. So it's very complicated uh, and actually it needs to be because there are a huge number of different types of microbes viruses, bacteria, etc., that might decide to attack us. And we have to be able to defend ourselves robustly against these. Some of you may have heard of the boy in the bubble, which was a famous case of a child that was born without a functioning immune system. And this child had to live out his short life within a sterile bubble. Any contact with the outside environment would have meant certain death from infections that he had no way of fighting off. So a functioning immune system is absolutely vital for survival. But there is another side to the immune system. We often talk about it as a double-edged sword because as well as being critical for immune defense, it also has the potential to cause us problems. So if immune responses are directed against our own tissues rather than against invading microbes, we can develop autoimmune diseases. And the type of disease we get depends on which particular tissue is attacked by the immune system. So it's the joints in rheumatoid arthritis, the skin in psoriasis, the pancreas in diabetes. So the immune system is a powerful weapon system to target invading microbes. But if that targeting isn't perfect, we can get collateral damage that causes autoimmune diseases. And actually, these autoimmune diseases are on the rise. We're seeing uh, increases in multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, which, as you heard, is another focus of interest here and also type 1 diabetes, which is my special area of interest. And we don't really know why this increase is occurring. So for type 1 diabetes, we know that there are around 400,000 people in the UK living with type 1 diabetes, of which more than 29,000 are children. And we think that type 1 diabetes is actually increasing at a rate of around 3% per year, and actually even faster than this if we look in the youngest age bracket. Just last year, it was revealed that the UK is now the fifth highest for uh, rate of type 1 diabetes diagnosis in the world. So this is clearly an escalating problem. It's something that's not going to go away. So given the scale of this problem, we think it's really important to understand how type 1 diabetes develops. So what do we know? Well, we know that type 1 diabetes is caused by a particular type of white blood cell called a T cell. So just to put this in context, this is a blown up photograph of some of the cells that we have floating around in our blood. On the left, you can see a red blood cell. So these are the cells that carry oxygen around the body. In the middle here, you can see this little cell that's a platelet. And these are important for blood clotting. And then on the right, this big fluffy cell here, this is a white blood cell. And it's the white blood cells that are key for fighting infection, but also that cause autoimmunity. And specifically, it's a type of white blood cell called um, a T cell that's responsible for autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes. And these T cells are also important for fighting infection, so they're not just the bad guys. We do need them as well. 
So in order for T cells to cause type 1 diabetes, they first need to be activated. So what do we know about how a T cell becomes activated? Well, we know that T cell activation requires the T cell to interact with another cell that's called the antigen presenting cell. And these two cells have to come together and have a molecular conversation. So molecules on this antigen presenting cell need to interact with molecules on the T cell in order to switch the T cell on uh, and allow it to perform its effective functions. So if we home in in a little bit more detail on this interaction between the T cell on the right and the cell that's activating it on the left, we can see that there are two main molecular interactions involved and we conveniently call these signal one and signal two. Signal one involves a molecule on the T cells called the TCR and this signal determines what the T cell can recognise, so which microbes it can respond to. So what actually happens is this antigen presenting cell takes up little bits of microbes or little bits of our own tissue and presents them here to the T cell. And then the TCR determines whether this is something the T cell can recognise or not. But just recognising something isn't enough for the T cell to become activated. It also needs this signal 2, which is a go signal, or what we call a co-stimulatory signal. And this signal really gives the go-ahead for T cell activation. So you need both of these signals to occur. So it's a little bit like in films where you have the military trying to launch a nuclear weapon from a submarine and you have to have two people coming along with their keys at the same time in order for the launch to work. So you've got to have both of these signals for your T-cells to be activated. So that's how T-cell activation happens. How is this process regulated? We know that if T-cells get activated inappropriately, this can actually cause us a lot of harm, it can do a lot of damage. So clearly this is something that has to be um, kept in check very tightly. And actually controlling T cell activation is so important that we have a particular type of white blood cell that is dedicated to inhibiting immune responses. And these are called regulatory T cells or Tregs. In rare situations where babies are born without Tregs because they've got a defect in the gene that's needed to make them, these children uh, experience excessive T cell activation and develop lots of different autoimmune diseases within the first few months of life. So the T cells are attacking all different tissues in the body of these children. 80% of them, for example, get type 1 diabetes, which really shows us how important these Treg cells are to prevent diabetes under normal circumstances. So given that these Tregs play this really important role in preventing autoimmunity, we've been really keen to try and understand how they're actually working. And one of the things we've discovered is that Tregs can remove the go signal from antigen presenting cells. So the Tregs come along and they actually engulf this go signal, leaving the T cell without this critical signal too that it needs for its activation. So this T cell now doesn't get activated and it doesn't cause autoimmunity. And we can actually visualise this process experimentally by looking at immune cells under the microscope. We can actually find cells that have eaten up this go signal and are in the process of digesting it. So you can see it as these green vesicles within the three cells. And we think that this process is going on all the time in everybody in this room just to keep our immune systems regulated. 
So if people have time after the talks, uh, at the stand over here, we've actually got a video that shows the T-Regs coming along and literally biting off and eating the go signal from another cell. So this has revealed a completely novel function for these T-Regs, and it's opened the door for us to ask some new scientific questions. Essentially, what we're interested in finding out is whether this process has perhaps gone wrong in people that are developing autoimmune diseases. Are the Tregs failing to regulate the levels of the GO signal appropriately? And is this unleashing T cell responses that are causing or worsening autoimmune diseases? So we've got a study going on at the moment in patients with type 1 diabetes to try and address just these questions. So, so to summarise all of this together, your immune system is a dangerous weapon that needs to be tightly regulated. And we actually have specific populations of cells that are, regulated, that are uh, dedicated to regulating T cell activation and keeping the immune response in check. What we're trying to understand is why this immune regulation fails in people with autoimmunity, and specifically whether there are alterations in this process of engulfing the GO signal. So these are quite long-term research aims, but the principle is if we can understand what's going wrong in people with autoimmune diseases, then we can potentially uh, find ways to try and correct this. So I'd like to end by thanking all of my lab members and my funders and collaborators, and I'd be happy to take questions.